The greatest thing I learned in the void was, though I could know everything, it meant nothing without experience. The void is devoid of experience. That's why creation happens. Creation is absolute pure consciousness coming into life and vibration. You are absolute pure consciousness coming into vibration. This is your host, Dorothy Shelton. This video is about our true origin as a soul and spiritual being. It sheds light about our God Self and why we chose to leave that state of oneness or pure bliss, to experience hardship and sorrow, limitations and strong emotions in this physical body. Why did we choose the path of separation when our true nature is oneness. This video is divided into two sections. The first is a near-death experience by Mellon Thomas Benedict, who developed brain cancer and as a result was given six months to live. When he died and met the light, he was given such wonderful insights, which he shares in his talk after returning from the dead, literally. The second part of the video is a message from Yeshua who is being channeled by Pamela Kriber. He speaks about our true origin, why we chose to depart from unity consciousness and become a defined individual awareness. I'm someone who, before my near-death experience, cursed humanity in every way you can imagine. I was really down on human beings and I was even more so down on any concept you might call a god. Uh, I really couldn't believe there was a god that put all this mess together. It didn't make any sense to me at the time. And so I died a pretty miserable human being. I thought my parents didn't love me, so I didn't dare go home. I, that's the last thing in the world I wanted to do was go die at my parents' house. And so I ended up with a stranger in a strange land and died one morning after about four months up there. But my experience was one in which I died in my bed. My caretaker usually came around around 10 o'clock to see if I was awake, because I was sleeping very late those days. And then I had the, the experience of being out of my body and not knowing what that was. That was very confusing. And I remember running down the hall to uh, Susan's room and trying to wake her up. My hands would go through her, and she would move just a little bit, like I thought maybe I was communicating. And then I found myself back with my body and this, there were these waves of like rainbow energy coming off my body and it was life leaving me. I was watching my body just die. And that's when everything got dark around me and a life review began. And my life review began at the moment I died and went in reverse to the moment I was born and prenatal. In that life review, Suddenly, everything made sense, my entire life. Not that I liked it, but suddenly, for the first time in my life, I could see why I had done the things that I had done, made the moves I had made, why I had never received love, and I also got to see how much love people had tried to give me in my life that I was not receiving. I couldn't see it. The life review was going on, and I wasn't feeling good about it, but it was understandable and clear and as I wasn't feeling good, it got to me. And as it got to me, the darkness closed in on me. And that's when I really experienced a total gravitational collapse of my soul. I fell through my own black hole into what you might call the hell consciousness. I, I went straight to hell. And hell, I was surrounded by millions of other souls, and each one being consumed by their own life issues. You weren't even aware, really, of, of what was going on around you, but you were in like your own bubble, suffering from your own life issues, eating you alive. That's what I felt like. Then I realized that hell is a state of consciousness, very real and existing in both life and what we call death. But consciousness survives death, and the individual takes their issues, positive and negative, with them to the other side. It felt like I was there in eternity, actually, is what it felt like. But I was rescued by the light, taken to the light. In absolute awe, I asked the light, Are you God? 
Then within the light I saw a figure smiling at me, and I immediately knew that it was the Christ. I mean, the real thing, the true vibration, love, compassion, forgiveness, everything you've ever heard about Christ or Christ consciousness. Even though I spent some years of my youth in a Catholic boarding school, I had always thought the Jesus story was just that, a story. And here was Christ himself before me, gracing me on every level. Wow. As Christ was gracing me, the light transformed, and within it I saw the Buddha as a living lotus, the center unfolding endlessly, every petal blossoming a different Buddha, and all of them sacred. The grace was profoundly beautiful. Then the light transformed ever so wonderfully into Lord Krishna, with glistening iridescent blue skin of such grace and power. And the light transformed yet again, this time into the great Allah, grace beyond grace, the sun, the moon, the stars, and so very much more. I saw Muhammad in absolute devotion and total bliss at Allah's bejeweled feet. The light continued to transform into an endless cascade of gods. Each and every one of them was for real and sacred. I felt their grace and power. I honored all of them. African, Egyptian, Greek, Hebrew, Christian, Islam, Native American, and so on and on. I was in the God stream of consciousness where all gods are valid and very, very real. I was given knowledge at light speed. As fast as I could think a question, I was graced with answers from the transforming light of the gods. Am I in heaven, I asked? Yes, you always have been. The universe and everything is already in heaven from before the beginning of time. The light answered. Who or what then is the most real or truest or greatest God of all, I asked. There was no response this time. I asked again, and a third time before my question was answered. It came as a realization, opening as a wellspring in the deepest part of my soul, accompanied by a multitude of angelic voices. The voices whispered, Who and what is not God? I realized how true this was. If I tried to name what is God, I would have to name everything in the universe and more. So I saw that the entire universe is the body of God. There is nothing real or imagined that is not God's stuff. All at once it dawned on me, that if everything is God, then I must also be God. At that second, I experienced the I am, that which is in all. I realized that I was interacting with a matrix of unimaginable energy, the superconscious or higher self realm. This energy realm is a very real place, a dimension of the most magnificent, subtle energy of life. It was like being in the purest and most complete non-judgment and acceptance I have ever known. It transformed me. To be accepted and loved totally in that way. The instant the light embraces, one will never, ever be the same again. I saw that the tunnel of light was like a navel cord, the silver cord, connecting each and every soul to the source of life, to God and that everything one experiences while going to the light is their own feedback loop or stream of consciousness made up of the thoughts, beliefs, prejudices, all of their life issues. That's why a Christian will most likely have a Christian-oriented experience. And a Buddhist, a Muslim, a Catholic, a Native American, and an African will each have their own personal experience, and the journey will be custom tailored by each individual's personal belief system. I saw that everyone, no matter what religious or philosophical group they may belong to, has a slightly different angle or way of interpreting God. 
the universe, good and evil, love and fear, even the colors of the rainbow. And that's what's so wonderful about human beings. We each look at life in our own individual and unique way. Our different views and opinions make this world a richer place to be in. Our lives would become very dull indeed if we all thought about things in exactly the same way. I was also shown that more often than we know, our rigid beliefs, prejudices, and fear of survival can limit our fuller understanding of the true meaning of life. Since we are all God, I asked, then why are humans so evil? Why are we destroying our planet and each other? At that moment, the light breathed me into it. And suddenly I found myself in a mandala. It's the only thing I can tell you it looked like, an endless mandala of living human souls, of all the human souls that had ever existed. And in that mandala of human souls, I could look into every human soul. And you may not believe this, but I had a look in all of your souls too. All of you were there, every human soul that had ever been. I could see no evil, no darkness whatsoever. And then I was shown my soul. And there was no darkness. Nothing that I suspected, it was not there. It was all an illusion. And in that moment, it was like an atom bomb went off. And everything that I ever knew was obliterated. And then these souls, and it was all of you too, gave me life again. These souls gave my soul life again. I had never received such love in my life as I received in the mandala of human souls with the light. Then I felt a wholeness come into me and I experienced, all I can tell you was like a supernova after a total gravitational collapse. I went into a supernova and the supernova took me through the light at the end of the tunnel and the universe opened up to me and many of you may have experienced this where suddenly you could understand anything in the universe it all made such sense and it really is one simple thing built upon another and that's why it's possible to understand it all once you get to the oversoul level it's all everything in this universe is one simple thing added to the next it's all very very simple and I got a full full explanation of the physics of reincarnation and all that most of which I had never heard of in my life I had no spiritual or metaphysical background or jargon in my life at that time. And after it, suddenly all that was easily understandable. And more than that, I discovered there's nothing metaphysical in this universe. There's nothing paranormal. <laughs> it's quite normal. All of it, the psychic stuff, the angels, all of that is quite normal and very, very real indeed. Then I became aware of a second light. And the second light was the light of the Big Bang. And I was taken through that light before the beginning of time, before I had ever been created. And yet I was there and fully conscious in what you might call the void. Mystics have talked about it. Now the void is absolute consciousness. There's more void in this universe than anything else. And I've spent a lot of my time in the years that I've been back trying to be able to explain the void experience to people. The void, and we can only use metaphors at this point until we evolve a little more, the void is less than nothing and yet greater than all of creation put together at the same time. Godhead is mostly nothing but much, much more than everything. The void is ultimate Godhead, is without beginning and without end. You've heard this, it's true. And it's always the same and always changing at the same time. And very soon, as we evolve as a species, we will be able to understand concepts like things don't need beginnings. And there's never an ending, ever in anything that we do or is done in the universe. It's a continuum much more fantastic than we can imagine at this time. 
The greatest thing I learned in the void was, though I could know everything, it meant nothing without experience. The void is devoid of experience. That's why creation happens. Creation is absolute pure consciousness coming into life and vibration. You are absolute pure consciousness coming into vibration. No matter how screwed up or sick you think you are, believe me, the lowest human being on this planet is starting out at an incredibly high level. Just think of where you are. What I did learn was that everything in the universe wants to be where you are, right where you're sitting right now. Believe me. What is the good of knowing everything if there's no experience with it? Now what this means, technically, is that Godhead is evolving. And you're at the spearhead of Godhead's evolvement. It's not that you're trying to become God. God is becoming you. That's what's going on. God had transformed a part of God's self into soul. The soul needs experience to find again its divine origins. The soul needs to be alive, to experience, to discover, to self-destruct, and to recreate in order to feel who the soul truly is, namely, God. The self-evidence of being one and whole had been shattered and had to be regained by experience. This in itself was a great feat of creativity. The burning of eye consciousness was a miracle. It had never existed before. Despite all the troubles and sorrows, deep down within you, there is still a sense of wonder and excitement about living in duality, about experiencing and creating the new. This is God's original excitement, the reason God started with this journey through you in the first place. When you started out on your journey, you faced evil, fear, ignorance, with only a vague memory of the good, which is home in your mind. You started to battle fear and ignorance while longing for home. However, you will not return home in the sense of returning to a state in your past. For creation has changed because of your journey. The end of your journey will be that you have become larger than good and evil, light and dark. You will have created a third energy, the Christ energy, which embraces and transcends both. You will have expanded God's creation. You will be the new creation of God. God will have gone beyond him or herself when the Christ consciousness is fully born on earth. The Christ Consciousness did not exist before the human experience. The Christ Consciousness is the consciousness of one who has gone through the multi-layered experience of duality, has come to terms with it, and emerges on the other side. He will be the inhabitant of the new earth. This one will have let go of duality. She will have recognized and embraced her own divinity he will have become one with his divine self, but his divine self will be different than before. It will be deeper and richer than the consciousness from which it was born. A one could say God will have enriched him or herself by having gone through the experience of duality. This is the ultimate breakthrough to enlightenment, to realize that you yourself are the God you are craving. There is nothing outside you that can bring you into the heart of your own power, your own wholeness. You are it. You are the one and you have always been the one. You have always been waiting for you. I live every day with the feeling that I just won the biggest lottery in the universe. 
You imagine why Bed McMahon showed up and handed you $10 million? I feel that way every day. I jump up out of bed and go out on the deck and just thank the universe for being here. Your life is the greatest lottery prize in the universe. The other thing too is that you're in very good hands, your own.